Well, enough of that. <laughs> I think, you yeah. know, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a period of time in the, uh, the mid-90s when uh, Laura Dern and Sam Neill were basically co-presidents of the United States. It was that popular, that film. I mean, I'm possibly not quite correct. Maybe, just maybe a little bit not right. Anywho, welcome everybody. Welcome to this celebration of America's greatness and uh, the celebration of the greatness of video games, which in many ways, the two are essentially the same. But um, yeah, it's time to play some uh, Liberty or Death and uh, just for consistency. There we go. I'll s update everything on the, uh, the, the the dashboard here. I'm destined to never... Oh, there we go. It actually has the game. Oh. Off to a great start. <laughs> I truly did not mean to. Those of you with adblock are probably um, enjoying this immensely. Those of you who don't have adblock are probably not hearing this <laughs> and are thus very, very annoyed. <laughs> oh my god, it's just so appropriate for how America works anymore. It's just. <laughs> Oh, I hit the wrong button. Well, now everybody sees an advertisement. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we'll wait a few seconds here. I was just so excited by the Jurassic Park music, I think. And really, am I wrong to be that excited? I don't think so. It's been on TV constantly the past couple of days, by the way. Oh, Freddy's here. That's That's great. <laughs> God damn it. Got three, two, one, and we're back! <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, apparently, I, I need to be a little bit more cautious because the save button for the, the, uh, the stream information is right by the uh, advertisement button, conveniently enough. So there you go. I really apologize for that. Uh, but we can all appreciate the irony. Anyways, um, yeah, let's get started here. We'll move on from that whole ugly chapter. All right. So without further ado, we're going to be playing Liberty or Death, which is a Koei game, very much in the vein of Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Uh, I guess what would differentiate the two is that there's just one kingdom involved, and then America is is Shu. I don't know. I haven't read the actual rom Romance of the Three Kingdoms. So anyways, let's get going on this before I further embarrass myself. I just need to reset the game. Very carefully, see if I can uh, push the right button here. There we go. That Kushibasawa, man. It is finger in every strategy game this side of the Pacific. Turn that down a little bit. Actually, no, we won't. We'll let it rock. 1585, the first colonists set sail from Great Britain in hope of finding new wealth and freedom in North America. Though America promised to hold profit. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading a Mad Lib. The people have endured many hardships before the first colonies began to take shape. Thereafter, Great Britain imposed a heavy tax on the prosperous colonies. When the people rose up in protest, the British fleet 
Move to America's shores. Alarm. Indeed. Patrick Henry, voice the people's fears. Let us not deceive ourselves longer. We have done everything. Literally everything. Oh, to avert the storm which is now coming on. We have built fences and rickety shacks. We are prepared. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. I know not what other course other men may take. Oh, shit. The next gale that sweeps from the north, I thought I memorized this, will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Here we go. I know not what course other men may take. Say it. Others may take. Fine. But as for me... I'm firing my laser! <laughs> Jeez, I forgot about this graphic! It's kind of morbid. <laughs> He's really laying it all on the line, though. There we go. I gotta move the chat up. There we go. It's freedom of speech and all that. Here we go, let's get started. And I love this song. <laughs> So we're going to start a new game. Grimoth is busily posting worrisome images in the chat, which are getting cut off. Um, so Liberty or Death, as I was saying, is very much like all of Koei's kind of strategic warfare simulations, particularly uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Uh, you'll see immediately why. Um, we're going to play... Uh, against the computer, and I have this thought in my head of actually playing as the British because, uh, what if, ladies and gentlemen, what if, thinking about it, I'm doing it. We're going to be playing as Thomas Gage, who I believe was the, uh, colonial governor of Massachusetts, I think? I, I don't know why he's considered the CNC, but I don't know. <laughs> what if the Brits actually, you know, gave a shit? Because the way that I always remember learning about it, especially in my um, British uh, history class that I took in college, was that the Brits were kind of just like, we don't fucking know. What, what, are, what do you want from us? I don't know. If, just, I don't know. Get, just go then, I guess. God. You're just kind of befuddled by the whole experience. <laughs> Anyways. Thomas Gage. Stationed in America since the outbreak of the French and Indian War, he has been Commander-in-Chief of Britain's North American Forces for 12 years. Okay, well, apparently that answered that issue. So, here we go. Confirm Thomas Gage is Commander-in-Chief. I certainly do. Revolution is a mystery! And we're gonna up the game level to medium. I like my game level to be a nice medium, a little pink in the middle. Uh, I will wait for no man. And I will view battles because that's the bread and butter of a Koei game. And I'll take the advice for now. And that's all there is to it. There's only two sides to pick from. When two tribes go to war, freedom is all that you can score. What kind of wipe is that? Is that a circle wipe? And I love the jaunty British Parliament music. This is a highlight of the of the game. I hereby call to order the Summer House of Commons for 1775. I have a pant load in me right now. General Gage, your budget for the next three months is 4,038 wobbly woos. Use it wisely. Whom? Who will you ask for? To whom will you ask support? <laughs> From whom will you ask support? There. I would like to speak with Lord Barrington, please. Oh, 
I shall be blessed if you need additional regiments. I would like additional regiments of the north. Yes. I will send three royal regiments. Yes. What, what? Tally ho, Pip Pip and Bob's your uncle. And let us now speak to the ever pleasant Lord Sandwich. Don't ask how he got that name. It's an old fraternity name if you catch my drift. One piece of bread, one sausage, and another piece of bread. I'm suddenly turning a little bit into Bill Cosby. Which is alarming for everyone. And I just spat all over my monitor. <laughs> he looks like kind of a creeper, too. What assistance do you need from our fleet? Yes. Mm. Would you like command of the sea? And all the seamen on it? Um... Command of the Sea is actually really nice. I haven't, I've had a ah, beer, Arblinson. Um, transport is, uh, so uh, I'll explain what these actually mean. Command of the Sea uh, allows you to um, just keep the Americans away from a specific sector so that they can't do anything. Joint Attack um, allows you to use the fleet in land battles where, of course, the fleets can go. And then uh, Transport allows you to move um, troops from one province to another so that that's uh probably what i'm actually going to do because of the situation that the british start in they are holed up in boston and uh they are in imminent danger of being killed one thing about this game too is that if you lose your commander-in-chief you lose the game so uh we don't want to have that happen i think that if you i don't know if you necessarily lose i think though that the ai will offer to pick things up for you but you essentially do lose yeah all right, so um, I actually am going to transport. Transport regiments from which districts, sir? Ooh. I'm going to transport from Boston, and we'll just look at the map here. Uh, there's some other items I'll mention while we're looking. As you can see, the British are firmly in control of Canada as they remain. And then um, you also see that the Americans are the blue guys here, and they have a lot of New York and... Yeah, it's, it's a very electoral looking map, but the green ones are um, essentially like independent Americans and these are like Tories over here like they're they're not really you can't command them they're they're AI controlled but they're uh, against the Americans and they're also against the the, the green guys here too so um, but yeah we're gonna uh, move all of the troops out of Boston. Uh, what did I tell him to do? Did I just tell him to move from Boston to Boston? Well, whoops-a-daisy. Uh, how much will you pay the officers this season? Their normal salary is 906. Mm -hmm. Very good, yes. Right. We must, we must spend on, more on sea power to fortify our defenses. Can you spend any more funds? No. Uh, the, um... The Americans have basically no fleet, so we don't really have to worry about that. This guy is a captain of hired troops. Of course, you know that the British relied very heavily on Hessians. So, do you need the help of any mercenaries? Ah, uh, yeah. I will take acht mercenaries. Jawohl. How much will you give the regiments this season? I will give them a whopping 2,000 American dollars. <laughs> And I am satisfied with these allocations. Uh, actually, you know what? I should have gone back and said no, because I fucked everything up. Oh, well, we're in command of the seas here. It's not a big deal. Um, what I can do is uh, break out of Boston by going north into, I guess, what is that? Dover? New Hampshire? And the seas around the middle colonies are free of seamen, as are the southern colonies. This is liberty or death, Avers. That's how I live my life. And yes, we have Elias Durnford. Durnford. Out of Mobile. Um, so the way that this... I, I need to keep explaining different concepts. The more uh, districts that you control, the more money you get at the end of every quarter. So um, I actually am just going to keep these dudes... You can see that we have some dudes here in British Florida and what would later be uh, Alabama. We're actually just going to keep them hanging out here. There's not really much of a threat. Um, 
think what I'll do is have a parade. <laughs> Surf! He's so quick on the draw, my god! We're gonna have a parade in Mobile. Your officers have different stats. They have a body stat, they have a loyalty stat, a reputation stat, and a men's stat. And also, they have leadership, tactics, and discipline. I don't know what the interplay is with all of these, to be totally honest with you. These are obviously helpful in combat. This helps you recruit more troops. Uh, this helps your troops be better defensively, I think. Jesus, the images. Arms are uh, attached to your body, but also you can buy more. Morale is your troop morale and training. Self-explanatory. Um, actually, I should wait before I decide on like having a parade here. So this, this big thumb is the district's approval rating. If it goes higher, they give you more money. Um, and they also will give you more troops. So there you go. Uh, so rather than maybe doing a parade... I'm going to go ahead and train my troops. I'm going to drill. Your uh, commanders all have different ranks, and I don't exactly remember what the significance is of rank. Birmingham, they love to go so uh, there's different troop types. You can see that these are royal engineers. Engineers are pretty cool. They uh, let you shoot guns. They have cannons, but they also can build bridges, which is nice. Um, is there anything else I can do? Oh, I can't do a parade. I can do a gazette, which will increase the support. It costs 100, 100 guineas to print the pamphlets. Who will write the Gazette? I would I would presume that Mr. Dunford would be delighted to write the Gazette. Blinson lives in 39? Is that Asheville or something? So yeah, you can see that the leaflets are very, very helpful for making people like you. Because they're good readers. Now we're in Appalachia. And uh, Mr. George Turnbull. Not to be confused with George Clinton. Uh, I'm gonna have him... I think you could do a parade and it will increase the support for the, uh, for the district, but it's free. So that's the advantage of doing that. Uh, it costs you more body points, I believe. Raleigh. Hi, Jimmy. I am indeed. I'm still doing whatever this is. Um, was that under here? Yeah. Okay. Bang, bang. It's pretty vital to train your troops. I mean, that maybe goes without saying, but it's it's important. Augustine Prevost. Yes, very, very. He's got kind of a you know he's very ahead of his time. This looks like a kind of the early Beatles haircut. Anybody else seeing that? I think I'm onto something. And we got F. Rawden. He likes it raw and done at the same time. We have dragoons and just infantry, okay. Okay, well, um, yeah, not a whole lot to do down south. We really need to focus on Boston. Wow. Interesting things from R. Blinson. Okay. Thomas Gage. As you can see, not a, not a real popular chap, as you can see. Goes from 1 to 100. We are the drizzling shits in terms of popularity. So we are going to get the hell out of here because... Um, I wonder if I can show hotkeys. No. Yeah, so... Over here in Springfield, General Washington has a very large army, and uh, he will crush us if we stay here. So, 
Oh wait, I can't. Ah! I can do it! I can move! By sea! I will move into... Should I go to Montreal, Quebec, or Trois-Rivières? I think I'm gonna go to Montreal. Cause, uh, who doesn't like the Expos? It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna move to Montreal. And I'm gonna use that fleet. Ta -ta -ta! Hopefully I can move everybody. So we got Henry Clinton, William Howe, that's Robert, I think, Pigo, Piggott. This is Hugh McKenzie, I think this is John Fitzwalter, and I don't know this guy. Uh, and I'm going to take all of the things, because we're getting the fuck out! Whoop! Nicely done. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. There we are. So now we have uh, a few more troops, first of all, in this particular district. And uh, we're out of harm's way. And I can meanwhile focus on training my troops. La, 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 la. And you can see some of them can't train. That's because their bodies are weak and soft. Robert. Oh, we have John Andre in this province. Interesting. Interesting. I know that you can do, uh... You can, uh, get Benedict Arnold to become a traitor. But, uh, I don't remember how to do that. Uh, is there anything else we can do on the domestic front? Who doesn't like a parade? We could have Guy Carlton and John Andre uh, parade their their men around. The stunning spectacle of the men in battle dress. Support increased from 60 to 64. Really left an impression. Yeah, I need to try and do that, Bobo. I need to figure out how to do that. Uh, and we're good here. There's old Chuck. Let's see. I'm going to uh, do the same thing, basically. I'm just going to be drilling a lot. Ah. Because the Americans um, outnumber us right now, and it's best that we focus on improving our quality. And who is this? Simon Fraser! Is he the namesake of the university? Zerf? <laughs> Let's refer to our Canadian expert on Canada. Oh my god. Uh, da, da, da. Hefeweizen, I actually just drank a little bit of Hefeweizen. It is uh, made with wheat. Okay. Gradually improving. Okay, so actually, uh, it's very subtle, but uh, we did have some time pass. Um, and I'm just going to keep focusing on this. Just drilling. The thriller with the driller. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Captain Leslie to you. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Captain Leslie here. Leslie is a very good Canadian name. So, in keeping with Koei tradition, you might notice that a lot of the faces are like... I don't know if it's... It's not a palette swap, it's like a template. Like, it'll have this goofy face with different eyes and stuff, so... 
Oh, indeed, Roblinson, I shall have a resounding victory against the Colonials. Oh, quite. Oh, I rolled with Colonel Newsworthy in the Haberdashery campaign. I stay. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Americans are attacking Fort Stanwix. So this is actually not a battle I will be able to participate in because, as I mentioned, this is a province or a area that is controlled by Tories. Specifically by a butler. And that was Ethan Allen, actually. Who is attacking. So I'll show these guys. These are uh, basically gorillas. Not, not Harambe gorillas. Um, like, uh, I think for the... British, I think they're called like special guards, and then for the Americans, they're called rangers. But uh, they move quickly, they can go into forests, they can even go into the mountains. Um, they're just very adaptable, but they have a smaller troop count. Bobo's not a mod, well, that needs to be remedied immediately. I almost IP banned him. <laughs> and you will probably find this very familiar to like Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2 in particular. This is like a hex square arrangement. You got your hills, you got your mountains, you got your forests. You got your little your little wooden forts and then you got your your stony forts. Good God. They are not doing very well. And then they <laughs> and then they just fall off the face of the planet when they're done fighting. <laughs> Look at that guy. Apparently our uh, Tory compatriots are terrible. They are doing a very bad job. An insult to uh, the name Tory. Yeah, it's it's uh it's very manly. I think they must have been like, you know, we could have a red animation and then a blue animation for the Americans. Why don't we just split the difference? Let's just have them be purple. <laughs> oh, Koei. You so Koei. <clears throat> there they go. Fly, Walter, fly! We get this this condemning music. It's not my fucking fault. Yes, yeah, back to the land of civilization. John Burgoyne. We need to talk, because you need to go on a diet or something, because I need to be able to train you, but your, your, your supple body is preventing me from doing this. Um, we can actually take a look at him here. Apparently not very loyal, either. Oh, God, look at that. Look at those jowls. And that side eye. He can't even look the cam- that's, that's one of those things with Koei. If somebody isn't looking the camera dead on, or like, doesn't have a- like, he's got his lips pursed and everything. This is clearly an evil man. We know this. Koei, like, just lays it all on the table in the character portrait. You know everything you need to know about this person. This person is in the midst of an identity crisis about his sexuality, for instance. Charles Cornwallis has a perm like most grandmothers. Uh, 
Um, what am I doing? I need to still, still in all, drill my troops. <laughs> I would love to have like some kind of Koei game where like they just mix everybody up. And you got, like, Cao Cao commanding the British or something. Sort of like, uh, Warriors Orochi, but I don't know. Anyways. Didn't the reason the Brits lose is because they lost control of the South, or was it the North? They lost control of... Well, they, they didn't commit to the whole, uh, fighting the Americans thing very strongly. And, but yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, that was a big part of it. What are your orders from Montreal? Bring the Expos back! We got some pretty well-trained troops here already. I gotta say that one of my favorite uh, character portraits in this entire game is by one guy, Carlton. We'll look at that here in a moment. All right, um, take a gander. Look at that! Isn't he quite the lord of the manor? Mayor's hey, I'm Guy Carlton. Do the Carlton. Bop, ba -da -da, bop, ba -da -da. Um, we're good. Wait, 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 wait. Should I buy arms? Who will go to the market? Well, one guy Carlton would, of course. Yes. Uh, we'll need 857 weapons, costing 695 to arm all of our troops. I will buy all of them. And that's a very important thing. Uh, sometimes underappreciated by some in uh, Koei games. Always arm your troops. There they go. These Americans, they're running wild. They're spreading freedom everywhere. Spreading it like heart-killing margarine. Well, yeah, Bobo. <laughs> they wouldn't have gophers or anything. Look at that guy, he has no food. I think he has to, he has to automatically retreat at the end of this day, I think, yeah. Good battle, GG. I'm gonna wait until I get my reinforcements and then, and then, events will transpire. Can't drill, can't drill, won't drill. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Walter Butler. It's just a. An embarrassment to the crowd. Let's take a look at this rotten character. No. DC. What does that stand for in, uh... Oh, District Commander, I guess, in the game, but no. That guy doesn't look interesting. No, we gotta just bide our time here, Jimmy. They, they, uh, they're, they're like Hulkamania, it's true. But, uh, stiff upper lip and all that. Stiff upper 
portion of the United States, really, is what's got to happen. Just got to show indomitable resolve. New regiments have arrived. So we got two in that district. And they're uh, Tories, so I cannot command them. T. Brown and W. McPherson. You can hire them. You can uh, induce them into joining uh, your side for realsies, which I probably will do. Alright, Chuck. Uh, the... Let's get John Boy trained up. I think that uh, you can only train them so high, too. Uh, yeah, you can only see, you see that he only went up two points in training, and that's because of his. I think it's because of his discipline. So I think how the stats work. Yeah, let's take a look. You can see you can see some very interesting uh, geographic features. There's the, a little tiny bit of Lake Erie. You got Lake Ontario, and then uh, this would be Lake Huron, right? So yeah, and then you got whatever this stuff is. This is Lake uh, Canada. This is Lake uh, Beaver Tail, Maple Leaf Lake, Lake uh, Rick Moranis. Is Rick Moranis Canadian? In spirit, at least. There's a flower growing on a number nine. I gotta, I gotta look at this. Lake Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. The other one's Lake Aboot. Um, God damn it, I keep hitting... There we go. Oh yeah, it does look like some kind of pathetic... Like a nightshade. Lake Tim Hortons, thank you. Lethal. Hooking it up. I like the French crullers at uh, Tim Hortons, incidentally. What's your favorite, I mean, those of you who get to enjoy Timmy's, uh, what's your favorite uh, Tim Hortons treat? Just curious. Just conversating. No, they're, 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 it's 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 basically a, a Dunkin' Donuts just with Canadian flair, Bobo. An old fashioned? I beg your pardon. Didn't know that you could get those from the donuts shop. <laughs> That's a euphemism for a hand shop. I need to stop talking immediately and continue, well, not just talking, just uh, saying these regrettable things. Canadian flair would be what? Canadian, I would love to, instead of woo, he would be saying A. And he would be saying it very meekly, as though he had done something wrong. Yeah, poutine is uh, cheese curds and gravy. Oh, we got an actual Canuck here. Look at that. It's in the name. Um, Elias, my friend. Um, poutine is pretty good. It has to be made correctly, though. Because, like, I've been to places where they just, like, make their house gravy. And it can't just be, like, the typical American cream gravy. It's got to be a brown, kind of velvety, thinner gravy. It can't be the, the shit that you put on, like, biscuits and gravy, for instance. Can't do that. That's heresy. I'm actually going to move into District 50 here. Or, well, 49, I guess. 
We'll put Mr. Rodden over there. And uh, we'll give him a little bit more of the rations. You know what I forgot though? Those uh, those dudes in 46, there's... Oh wait, no, they're, ours are in 43 and there's two of them, so okay. Oh yeah, and yeah, no. It's gotta be actual cheese curds, like the chewy... Yeah. No, that's, that's bullshit if you just put cheese on it. Uh, what was I gonna do? I was gonna... Oh, let's just have a parade. Why not? My dog is sleeping somehow right next to me. Oh man, you're going to the Minnesota State Fair? Oh man, that only raised the support by one point? Fucking Koei math. <laughs> it's the worst. Can't do shit in this district. Oh, the first British... Oh wait, this is creepy dude. The first British fleet sees goods from defeated enemy ships. Really? What does that, what does that do? Oh boy, I think we're gonna get... Oh, baby. Oh! Every time that blinks, that's a regiment. Gee, I wonder if these guys are British. <laughs> well, okay, this guy, maybe. He might be Scottish, though, with the last name Grant. And then we've got uh, M. Roth, who is... Uh, don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Revolutionary War history... Uh, but, uh, David Lee Roth's great-great-great-great-granddad. 